It's almost fall, and you know what that means. It's cuffing season. The time of year when you'd rather pair up than be out alone in the cold. Aww. So it's time for courting during COVID. The only show that features singles who face a variety of obstacles, including no handholding, no sharing milkshakes, and no seeing each other's smiles. Let's meet our contestants. This is Melanie. She's 28, a dog person, and a wedding planner surrounded by everyone else's love. There are times that I'm seeing the epic cuteness of a wedding and I have to walk away for a second. This is Blake. He's 31, a cat person, and a jazz musician looking for someone he can harmonize with. A sweet person, someone that understands uh, my love for music. Each of them are looking for that special someone to invite into their CDC recommended six foot personal bubble and let's hear it. Take, Take down, down that, that mask. mask. Okay, dating is weird enough already. A Pew Research study from October 2019 showed that nearly half of Americans think that dating is harder than it was 10 years ago, and that's without adding a virus in the mix. So what's it like to date during a pandemic? My typical clients are people that are busy, selective professionals. We asked Courtney Quinlan, a professional matchmaker who says a little social distance went a long way for business. The numbers have gone up in all areas of what we do, whether it's matchmaking, online dating, a lot of their, their avenues that maybe they had used before to meet people are now something that either they're not available or they're not comfortable doing. So to mask or not to mask, and where's it safe to go? If in doubt, Courtney says stick to a virtual night out or in. My advice to my client is, well, what do you really have to lose? You, you can get ready from the waist up. You can sit in the comfort of your home. You don't have to worry about paying for parking or even leaving your house. And Melanie says it helps weed out those she's not willing to wed. People have to be a lot more interesting when you're virtually dating. Um, they can't just like, you know, snag you with the in-person charm. And people run out of small talk really fast. Uh, and it's a really difficult because the only thing people want to talk about is COVID. So let's talk about what to talk about. I tell my clients, Go on your first date, talk about normal first dating conversations, keep it light, keep it fluffy, try to not talk about all the horrible things going on right now in the world. And meaningful conversation may move things forward faster during the pandemic. It did for Blake and Alex. We got to be so close so quickly. Blake found his musical match. Alex is a singer songwriter with the right sense of humor. He laughs at my really bad jokes sometimes. I do. And I know people, <laughs> people say that and stuff, but, but I, that like makes me feel so good. Nah. As for Melanie, Meh. she's still swiping. Okay, this guy seems nice. But she says it's not all bad because apps have made it easier to set preferences for social distancing. And then we got a match. That's exciting. Text him later. And when later rolls around, she says easing into that six foot boundary can even be fun. They've been really upfront about it where they say, hey, you know, like we're closer than six feet apart. Like, can we get any closer? And it's really cute. It's like another fun pickup line for him. So maybe COVID's helping Cupid after all. Do you guys think that you would be in the same place you are in your relationship right now if it weren't for a worldwide virus? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, probably not. It just kind of caused us to be very focused on each other. The pandemic's put a lot of things on hold, but love isn't one of them. Eva Anderson, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa.